As you drive through this main road in Kibale district, this thick forest cover that stands by the roadside looks amazing and natural. But it wasn't long before we stopped at this point after realizing a couple of dry and cut trees by the roadside. When we took a closer look, it was then that we discovered that behind the thick road cover was a garden that had just been set up after clearing the forest cover. The tree stands are still visible in the garden that was cleared by burning. Some trees are still on the ground which will be carried away and used as wood for cooking. This has, however, encouraged some organizations such as the World Wildlife Fund and the Ministry of Water and Environment to come in and engage the farmers who clear the land for farming. So you can see that this project is introducing different activities that can support the rural communities here to survive on without destroying the forest. So I really wish to see this project scaled up. Okay, it is coming to an end, but we have trained the communities into community forest management. So we hope that with the NFA and the local leadership, we should be able to carry forward the program. Beekeeping is another activity that has been introduced to the communities. Here, each community is given beehives which have to be located next to the forest. This, in most cases, prevents the farmers from cutting down more trees because of the buzz that the bees create when interfered with. The location of the beehives has to be strategic. Where I am is the corridor of the movement of animals from one forest reserve to another. And so, if this area is left to go, and the people stand for plant maize, that means the animals will have less area to move around and they will be confined in one place and maybe killed off. So if we can conserve this place, that means we are also increasing the probability of increasing the herds of our animals, the wildlife within the area, because this is normally their ground, but you have invaded it. But they are yet to see the results of the initiative because a large percentage of the farmers want something that is tangible as opposed to long-term means of making money like beehive keeping and nursery tree growing. He says he has not yet benefited from the bees since when he has crops, his family gets what to eat and he sells some of his food off to make money. But this process is not easy for the organizations that are implementing it on the ground. We need support, we need a political support. We need more of this, not only from the Ministry of Environment, but we need the Ministry of Lands also coming in to talk to people. We need urban planning people also talking to people. We need a coordinated effort from a number of ministries and a number of uh, stakeholders. This initiative comes after the Ministry of Water and Environment set a ban on issuing licenses that authorize people to cut trees for timber in March. Right now we have managed to get so many illegal timber dealers come out. That's one achievement. But now at the end of this financial year, which ends 30th June, we are coming up with the new licenses, new permits with security marks so that we know the people who have given those licenses are the ones that have been identified for timber dealing. And those who will not have them should not be able to do that work. The main focus has so far been put on the forests that are in the Albertine Rift, which have for such a long time been in their natural state, only to be destroyed as the population increases. It is believed that the practices will go a long way into reversing the effect that has already seen Uganda's forest cover reduce from 3.9 million hectares at the beginning of the 20th century to about 730,000 hectares over the years. Craig Kadoda, NTV, Ecotalk. Thank <laughs> you.